I'd like to talk a bit about how we get bit perfect data from this computer into the digital to analog converter, that's the Audio Lab MDAC Plus, through the amplifier, the Yamaha AS3000, and into uh, uh, my BMW uh, A24S speakers. So let's have a look at the computer system in, in a bit of detail here. First of all, let's take a look at some of the hardware and uh, uh, devices. Draw your attention particularly to this J River Media Center WDM driver, which uh, you see there in the uh, sound panel. This is a, a very nice feature which is available in J River, and I'm just going to show you where this is in the menu. So go to General and then Features. If you scroll down Features at the bottom there, you see WDM driver, and if you enable that, then that driver pops up in the window system and that means you can access the path through J River uh, through the audio system uh, for, for example, browsers. I'm going to use this reference file uh, in, the, uh, in the examples that we go through here. This is a reference file that I've taken from ripping uh, about a minute of data from a, a CD. So it's just an audio file and we'll, uh, we'll make some copies of that. Going to, first of all, we're going to use FUBAR. So this is using the WMD driver that I showed you previously. You can see there that's uh, in the uh, device and, and FUBAR. So this is now running music through uh, the J River uh, subsystem through my uh, RME sound card. You can see there it's a uh, part of the RME mixer there. So you can see that's, that's working. And you can see it's also there working through the J River Media Center WMD driver. So that's all making complete sense there. I've connected the output of the sound card from the optical out uh, via a cable directly to the optical input. So it's a loopback. It's not done within the card, it's an actual hard uh, loopback through the optical cable. So now when we play the audio, I can use Adobe Audition to capture the SPDIF input here. You can see it's the device input. I'm also locking the, uh, the clock, uh, the master clock to the output. Actually, it wouldn't make any difference whether it's the input or the output because it's, it's going to the same sound card. So there's only one clock on the card. So here we are, it's speeded up a bit. We're, we're playing from FUBAR through the J River WMD driver into Adobe Audition via the SPDIF cable, which is looping round from the output to the input of the RME sound card. I'm going to call that um, via FUBAR. That's our captured file, digitally captured on the sound card. I'm going to repeat this process now, but I'm going to use the J River program itself. So that's not using the WDM driver. That's using the way J River is configured through Wasapi, uh, through the RME card. Uh, so uh, Wasapi being a particularly good subsystem for audio. Uh, so again, you see the uh, J River's playing that file. We're capturing that in the RME card. You can see there the, the audio path. It's a 32-bit, two-channel WhatsAppy direct connection. Bit perfect. So we just capture that file. Save. Call it via J River. Save that to the drive. And now do the, uh, the checks. So first of all, let's load our reference file, and load our via foobar. Now we do an extraction on that. This is a comparison between the two files using the Audio Diff Maker software. Fantastic piece of software. Absolutely fantastic. There'll be a link uh, below for this.
So now that's actually created a number of files. The file that we're interested in is the difference, the WAV file, which is the difference between the, uh, uh, the, the starting reference file and the captured file. Okay, so let's open up Audition and then drag in the comparison file, see what it looks like. There we go. Looks like a flat line. Looks good. Let's zoom in. Oh, zoom in, zoom in, not out. Okay. Uh, there's a little bit of, yeah, very, very nice. So look here, we're talking about at minus 129 decibels, given that 16-bit uh, audio is minus 96. You can see that the, I mean, we're really talking about sampling and quantization errors at the, the noise floor of the card, which is well, well, well below the uh, the bits that are in a 16-bit file. Well, let's now do a similar activity with the file that we obtained from JRiver. So load the reference file and then load the JRiver file that we captured via the uh, optical cable on the sound card. Extract them. By the way, if you run this yourselves, you don't use files that are much longer than a minute long because uh, it's a tremendously demanding on the uh, on the memory. So you'll probably it'll probably fall over. Okay, so here we are. There's the comparison. Again, a flat line looks absolutely flat. We can zoom in and uh, of course we will eventually, as we zoom in, uh, start to see a few little wiggles. But you are well again down minus, minus 126 uh, uh, decibels. So um, well, well, well below the, uh, the, the minus 96 from, uh, from a 16-bit audio file. So all looks pretty good, actually. So now, slight difference, we're going through the motherboard optical output. You can see that there, and then looking at the record side, you can see that's now going into the SPDIF of the RME card. Notice now that the volume is larger than before. That's because we aren't going through the, uh, the J River WDM driver. Um, so uh, that was minus 10 decibels. I'm going to save this FUBAR via ASUS. Okay, so now let's read again the reference file and load in the uh, FUBAR via ASUS file and do the data extraction and see what happens. So that's the only thing we've changed there is the source of data. Instead of the RME card writing the digital data, it's now the, um, the Realtek Asus motherboard that's writing the data. No other settings were changed. But now we see a huge difference in the files. There's, there's no way that they're bit perfect. Well, maybe a little bit in the middle there. It looks like um, the noise floor is very, very low, but, but clearly we're, we're a long way away from bit perfect. And uh, we're going to explain why that is in a few moments and uh, show the importance of why it's, uh, it's important to lock um, your sound card uh, to the appropriate uh, clock when you're making a digital recording. Now here's the sound card. So this is the, the RME card. It's The clock is the internal clock there. So now we've had two clocks that have been running independently. So what we need to do is to change it to the SPDIF input and lock on that. So we're now locked onto the SPDIF input. We're going to run that again now. So you can see the uh, Realtek digital output is playing and we're reading that into the RME card. Now with the RME input locked to the output of the Realtek card, capturing the data uh, through uh, Adobe Audition. In fact, you have a setting in Adobe Audition to, to, to lock the clock as well. So now I'm going to uh, read uh, the reference file 
And I'm going to read the locked ASUS SP diff, Realtek SP diff file, and then run the extraction on that again. Okay, so let's open up the uh, Adobe Audition and then look at the difference file to make a comparison between the two. And you can see all of those uh, spurii, all of that, uh, all of that error has gone, and we have again another, basically another bit perfect uh, recording where the um, the noise, the noise in the uh, in the in the difference file is 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 it is a very it's minus 135 uh, decibels compared to a 16 bit of minus 96 so super 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 accurate in terms of uh, in terms of uh, bit perfectness there very interesting and um, you know you can really tell when you listen to music when the, the it's bit perfect because it's just so much smoother it really makes a difference so i hope you enjoyed that